Hello students, welcome to this INICT revision session. For anesthesia, I have selected the topic resuscitation for you as the most important topic from which the questions are expected. And I will try to revise the whole topic resuscitation with few important questions, which I have specially curated from this topic for you. Expect these type of questions to be asked in exam, okay? The question has been uh, formed in such a way that it will cover the entire topic of resuscitation sequentially, starting from basic life support, going to advanced life support, going to drugs, etc. of the advanced cardiac life support and going to some special circumstances of resuscitation like resuscitation of obstetric patients. Okay. So, we are trying to cover the entire topic. Okay. Starting with the first question. So, let us see the first question. A 70 years old male suddenly collapsed in park. He was approached by bystander who assessed him and found him without pulse and breathing. He alerted emergency medical system and started high quality CPR. All of the following are component of high quality CPR except. Okay, so let us talk about the situation. This is a situation of out of hospital cardiac arrest scenario. Okay, so let us see when you come across someone who is unresponsive and out of hospital, how do we approach? So, un, unresponsive, okay, unresponsive, okay, when someone is unresponsive, what is the first thing we do? We see the scene safety, whether the scene is safe for the person and the resuscitation person both or not right for the victim and the resuscitator the scene should be safe after confirming the scene safety see if the scene is safe we never move the victim we start the resuscitation that self but if scene is unsafe we have to move the victim to a safe place after establishing the scene safety the next thing is we call for help call for help so i call for help after call for help, what do we do? We assess the pulse and breathing. Pulse and breathing. So, how do we assess the pulse and breathing? For pulse in adult, we see the carotid, right? And for breathing, we see the movement of chest. Both we have to do within 10 seconds. So, we assess pulse and breathing within 10 seconds, okay? So, in this question, it has been provided no pulse and no breathing. Both are absent. So, definitely the person is in cardiac arrest. So, this means cardiac arrest. So, how do we establish cardiac arrest? No pulse, no breathing means someone is in, person is in cardiac arrest. So, whenever anyone is in cardiac arrest, what is the first thing we do? We start with high quality CPR, high quality CPR, cardiopulmonary resuscitation. Now, why high quality? What do I mean by this word high quality? See, even if you are doing the best chunk compression and ventilation, you cannot maintain more than 30% of the cardiac output. And if you do less than high quality, the quality is compromised, that 30% of the cardiac output will also be not maintained. Why are you doing this chest compression? Because there is no pulse, that means the heart has stopped pumping the blood. And when the heart has stopped pump pumping the blood, perfusion of the organs will be affected, especially your brain. So, brain is not getting any blood. So, when brain is not getting any blood, the brain will die within 3-4 minutes, hardly 3-4 minutes. But if we compress, press the heart, we do a chest compression, right? When Why do we do chest compression? Because the patient is made lie down on the heart surface and we are doing the chest compression, the heart is getting compressed. And this compression will maintain the perfusion, right? To maintain the perfusion. So, it has to be high quality to maintain the perfusion. So, what are the points of high quality chest compression? What comes under high quality chest compression? Five important points we have to remember comes under high quality chest compression. So, what are those five important points? First, your heart is pumping at a very fast rate, the blood. So, we have to match the rate of heart. 100 to 120 compression has been decided that would be sufficient to maintain the perfusion. So, first thing is the 
रेट फॉर हाई क्वालिटी द रेट शुड बी ऑप्टिमम सो रेट ऑफ कंप्रेशन रेट ऑफ कंप्रेशन 100 टू 120 कंप्रेशन पर मिनट सेकेंड डेप्थ हाउ मच वी विल कंप्रेस दैट परफ्यूजन विल बी मेंटेन्ड सो डेप्थ एट लीस्ट डेप्थ शुड बी एट लीस्ट फाइव सेंटीमीटर not more than 6 not less than 5 then allow complete recoil now what do we mean by this allow complete recoil why why do we need a complete recoil when you press the heart gets compressed and perfusion of the organs are maintained and the most important organ of concern is brain so brain gets adequate blood and when you allow the complete recoil the heart gets refilled and the heart gets adequate perfusion so perfusion of heart is maintained during recoil and perfusion of brain is maintained during compression so people say compress relax compress relax and i say brain heart brain heart so both are equally important right you have to preserve the brain also preserve the heart also okay so allow the complete recoil fourth minimum interruption in chest compression minimum interruption in chest compression see when you are stopping the chest compression the cardiac output is stopped and it takes another 5 to 10 compression to again maintain that perfusion which you were earlier maintaining so for full long gap there is no perfusion of the organs so interruption should be minimum well apart from compression there are few other things we have to do during resuscitation to give breath to the patient and we have to attach the darts of the defibrillator all these work should be done as quickly as possible within 10 seconds of stopping the compression so compression interruption should not more than be 10 seconds for any other work right try to maintain the compression without any break and last last is your just adequate ventilation just adequate ventilation so we have two important thing for high quality chest compression four factors are for compression and one factor is for ventilation right why just adequate ventilation well we can over ventilate we can give more oxygen giving more oxygen would do no benefit just a required oxygen is is needed but if you are over ventilating that is giving a higher tidal volume and giving more rate then intrathoracic pressure is increasing and refilling of the heart would be affected plus when you are giving a high tidal volume intra abdominal pressure is also increasing and if patient is full stomach as risk of aspiration increases got it so over ventilating would be harmful we just have to do adequate ventilation what is just adequate ventilation just adequate rate of the ventilation is 10 breath 10 breath per minute not more than 10 breath per minute in an adult okay so these are the five points for high quality chest compression so if i just see the question again what are the options chest compression 100 to 120 compression per minute right allow a complete chest recoil right depth of compression should be at least 5 cm correct respiratory rate 20 to 30 breath per minute no this is an adult patient this respiratory rate is written for a pediatric patient for adult the respiratory rate should be 10 breath per minute not more than 10 breath per minute right for children the respiratory rate should be 20 to 30 breath per minute okay so i i have written just adequate ventilation not more than 10 breath per minute so this is the wrong option got it so this is incorrect okay okay now let us just see the flow chart of basic life support so we have to verify the scene safety if we come across a unresponsive person we have to call for help and then we have to see pulse and breathing if there is no pulse no breathing no pulse no breathing which was in our patient in this case, first question then we start with high quality chest compression right we start with high quality chest compression for 2 minutes in a ratio of 30 compression to ventilation okay for 5 cycle 5 cycle i am giving 30 compression to ventilation 30 compression followed by 2 ventilation stop give a two breath 
uh, right after 30 compression again resume compression we do it for 5 cycle this will roughly take 2 minutes after 2 minutes we again feel for the pulse carotid for within less than 10 second no pulse again compression and ventilation for 5 cycle again it will take 2 minutes again I feel for the pulse no pulse the same thing so we go on doing the same thing 30 compression to ventilation 5 cycle within 2 minutes followed by pulse palpation of the pulse feeling of the pulse no pulse we resume compression ventilation till the help comes we have already asked for the help so till the help comes once the help come in an ambulance from hospital they always have automatic external defibrillator or a manual defibrillator so we attach that defibrillator as soon as possible so ad arrives ad stands for automated external defibrillator so when ad arrives we have to attach it immediately whatever stage of resuscitation we are we have to attach it immediately right and once the ad is attached it gives two voice prompt it can tell us it will analyze the rhythm once the pad of the ad is attached and will tell us whether the rhythm of the cardiac arrest is shockable or it is non-shockable right if the rhythm is shockable we give shock a predetermined shock of ad and we resume compression and ventilation if it is non-shockable we just do compression and ventilation got it so if it is shockable we give shock do compression ventilation no shock we just do compression ventilation now important once the ad pad has been attached we don't remove the ad pad because it is automated machine and every two minutes it will go into the cycle that stop compression let me analyze the rhythm so when we had not attached the ad every two minutes we will we were feeling the pulse here aad will do our work every two minutes it will analyze the rhythm and it will give the voice prompt what we have to do further we have to give shock and do compression or we just have to resume compression and ventilation right this is all we have to do in bls we go on doing this till acls team takes over when acls team will take over they will continue with uh, with the high quality chest compression that is high quality cpr and will attach the ecg electrode to analyze the rhythm because now we will manually analyze the rhythm and depending upon the type of the rhythm we will do the further management which i will discuss in further questions okay so remember this ad has a very strong role in bls basic life support has the triangle of the resuscitation has three important components first is compression high quality chest compression most important then the next is airway and breathing right compression airway and breathing and the last is defibrillation now defibrillation is also very important because if the rhythm is shockable rhythm right giving shock as soon as possible will increase our chances of revival in the patient if the rhythm is shockable we give the shock and the rhythm gets converted into sinus rhythm the chances of resuscitation improves viable resuscitation improves so if i have ad available with me and the patient has gone into cardiac arrest as it can happen in hospitals well i start high quality chest compression and attach ad pad as soon as possible i attach ad pad right if i have ad in my hand and patient has gone into cardiac arrest i'm just telling you a scenario I will attach AED pad immediately and I will start compression, right? So, because as soon as you attach the AED pad, AED will read and tell you, it will analyze the rhythm and it will tell you that whether it is shockable or non-shockable. And if it is shockable, give shock immediately. The chances of revival is very high. Got my point? Okay. So, this is what is basic life support. We have just uh, discussed all the steps. What are the questions which can be asked? Questions can be asked on the sequence. We talked about the sequence. When I come across a responsive person, scene safety, call for help, then pulse and breathing is analyzed, and then high quality chest compression is done. This is the sequence. Okay. Now, next thing which can be asked about points for high quality CPR. These are the five important points for high quality CPR. The next thing which can be asked, when should be the AD attached? As soon as possible. As soon as possible. Right? okay so this was first question now coming on the second question the second question is again a basic life support question but in hospital scenario the question is a 65 years old female whipple surgery 
was placed in high dependency unit. She complained of severe pain at operating site for which she was given IV morphine 4 mg by the duty doctor. The relative of the patient came running after 5 minutes and complained. Patient has become unconscious and is not breathing. On assessment, patient had feeble pulse but no visible chest compression. What should be the immediate management? So, patient was given morphine for analgesia. And after giving the drug, patient became after 5 minutes unconscious and no visible chest movement was seen. So, the duty doctor came, there was a feeble pulse, but no visible chest movement. What would be the immediate management? Now, see, if I show you this flow chart of BLS, when we see the pulse, assess the pulse and breathing, we assess the pulse and breathing. Uh, the second scenario can be that pulse is felt, but there is no normal breathing, as in our case. In this case, if there is pulse, if there is pulse, there is cardiac output then only there will be pulse. So, we don't need a compression, but there is no breathing. And if this no breathing situation will continue, patient will go into cardiac arrest. So, we have to give rescue breath because there is no breathing. So, we give the rescue breath. So, this is not cardiac arrest at, at this juncture. It is respiratory arrest. So, patient is not in cardiac arrest, but this patient is in respiratory arrest. So, what we do? for the managing of the respiratory arrest, for respiratory arrest. So, what do we do for managing a patient in respiratory arrest? We give rescue breath. We give rescue breath. Got my point? We give rescue breath. Let's say what we give in rescue breath in adult, we give one breath per 6 minutes, that is 10 breath in a minute. For children, we give 1 breath per 2 to 3 minutes, that is 20 to 30 breath in a minute. We give it for 2 minutes, we give this rescue breath for 2 minutes, right? That is in adult, I will give 20 breath in 2 minutes and in pediatric, 40 to 60 breath in 2 minutes. After 2 minutes, we will again feel for pulse because there is a high chance that cardiac arrest can get converted into, uh, sorry, respiratory arrest can, can get converted into cardiac arrest. And once it gets converted into cardiac arrest, immediately we have to resume the compression, right? But till it is in respiratory arrest, we just give the rescue breath, okay? So, what are the options? Rescue breath with bag valve mask at the rate of 10 breath per minute is the first option, which is the correct option. Second, intravenous naloxone. Yes, I will give naloxone because there is a history that five minutes back patient was given morphine. Mor naloxone is opioid antagonist. So, I will definitely give naloxone. I will definitely give naloxone, but that is not immediate management. Right? That I will do in a while. First, I have to give the rescue breath. So, this has to be given, but in a while. Chest compression is not done till the patient has pulse and physical stimulation. This is only done in movies, guy. If someone is not breathing and has no pulse, if I physically stimulate him, there will be no benefit. I have to start the resuscitation, chest compression. And if someone is, has pulse and then is not breathing, and if I physically stimulate him, he will start breathing. That can only happen in movies. We don't have to waste our precious time in physical stimulation. We only check for the response once, no response. We check for the pulse and breathing, and accordingly we manage, right? We don't waste our time like movies in doing a physical stimulation. Got my point? Okay, so answer is rescue breath with bag, wall, mask at the rate of 10 breath per minute. Got my point? Okay, the third scenario can be that patient has nor patient is unresponsive but has normal breathing and has pulse also. Now, this patient we will assess why the person has become unresponsive. There could be so many other reasons, right? But before assessment, we will make the person in re recovery position recovery position, that is lateral position. Recovery position that someone is made in lateral position, right lateral or left lateral with chest, with neck extended to prevent 
any aspiration to happen, right? So these are the three important scenario. One is for cardiac arrest in which we do high quality chest compression. The second is for respiratory arrest in which we give the rescue breath. And third, neither cardiac nor respiratory arrest, just unresponsive person, we make the recovery position, right? So this is about basic life support. Now let's say advanced cardiac life support team came and took over the patient, took over the patient. So what does the ACLS team do? We will discuss here with this question. A 45 years old critically ill patient in intensive care unit on mechanical ventilation showed supraventricular tachyarrhythmia in ECG stressing. So patient was in ICU, was in SVT, right? His blood pressure was not being maintained. So patient had a symptomatic supraventricular tachyarrhythmia. And the management of symptomatic supraventricular tachyarrhythmia is synchronized cardioversion. So synchronized cardioversion was done, right, very right, with 50 joules. Following the synchronized cardioversion, the page, this change was seen in the ECG. The ECG changed, as you can see in the question. And the pulse became absent and patient became unresponsive. Once the pulse becomes absent, definitely the patient is unresponsive. What is the immediate management? If you see this ECG tracing, this is definitely the ECG tracing of ventricular fibrillation. Ventricular fibrillation. How do I recognize ventricular fibrillation? Fibrillate, fibrillating wave. That is the waveform will have no morphology, no structure, no timing, nothing. Just irregular waveforms on the, on the uh, ECG tracing, right? Irregular waveform. So this is the shockable rhythm of cardiac arrest. And apart from CPR, in shockable rhythm of cardiac arrest, immediately what we have to do? We have to do the defibrillation. Defibrillation. Give the shock. You saw last in BLS I discussed automated external defibrillator, which recognize the rhythm in two broad divisions, shockable, non-shockable. So let us talk about little bit about the advanced cardiac life support. This is the algorithm of advanced cardiac life support. But before going on in this algorithm, I want to discuss with you the rhythm of cardiac arrest. The rhythm of cardiac arrest is divided into two types. Shockable, which the AD used to read just like that, but in ACLS, we will see the ECG tracing and we will recognize it, shockable. First type is shockable and the next second type is non-shockable, okay? So in shockable, what does come? In shockable rhythm, two rhythm comes, ventricular, fibrillation, ventricular fibrillation. I showed you the tracing, irregular waveform, okay? And pulseless ventricular tachyarrhythmia, pulseless tra ventricular tachyarrhythmia. There is a formed QRS complex, but it is broad and the rate is very high. In both this, what is happening? In both this, the heart rhythm, this rhythm of the heart, this electrical activity of the heart is not getting converted into mechanical output, so there is no pulse. In VF, ventricular fibrillation, heart is fibrillating, pop, 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 like this. And this is not getting converted into cardiac output. And in VT, the heart is beating at a very fast rate, not getting refilled, no time for the refill, so there is no output. In both these cases, if we stop the heart by giving a shock, by defibrillating, the heart will resume its natural rhythm. After stopping, it will resume its natural rhythm. There's a possibility it will resume the sinus rhythm because natural rhythm of heart is sinus rhythm. Got it? So, what is the definitive management of shockable rhythm? Shock. We have to give shock. We have to de fibrillate. We have to defibrillate. Okay. So, remember this. Now, coming on non-shockable rhythm. Non-shockable rhythm, we have two rhythms. Asystole. Asystole or flat line, what you say. And the other is pulseless electrical activity. Pulseless electrical activity. When I have these two rhythm of cardiac arrest, there is no point of giving shock. Because in asystole, there is no rhythm to stop it so that the heart resumes its sinus rhythm. That is nothing to defibrillate. And in pulseless electrical activity, the rhythm of heart is normal. So we will not, let's say, 
uh, give shock because there is no problem in electrical activity. So for some reason, there is no mechanical output which we have to manage. Okay, so these are the non-shock algorithm. So coming on the algorithm, right? We have a patient in cardiac arrest. Okay, we have someone in cardiac arrest. Okay, cardiac arrest. So if someone is in cardiac arrest, we start with high quality chest CPR. We start with high quality CPR, and then ECG is attached, and accordingly we see the rhythm. Now rhythm comes in the category of shockable rhythm, that is VF or BVT, or the rhythm comes in the category of non-shockable rhythm, non-shockable rhythm. Okay, if the rhythm is shockable, we give shock as soon as possible. After shock, CPR, compression, ventilation for two minutes, right? After two minutes, again we see the rhythm, same rhythm, shock. Then we start CPR again and we start giving the drugs. Now two drugs are given in shockable rhythm, adrenaline every three to five minutes, amiodarone after two dose of adrenaline, amiodarone can be given. Right, only in two doses, 300 milligram and 150, further I will tell you. We continue with CPR, shock every two minutes if the rhythm remains shockable and repeat on giving, repeat on giving adrenaline every three to five minutes. This is all the management of shockable rhythm. If the rhythm is non-shockable, we continue with CPR, the high quality CPR and give adrenaline as soon as possible, right. here. Shock was the priority. Here, CPR and adrenaline is the priority. And we do CPR for two minutes. Again, we analyze the rhythm. Same, non-shockable, we do CPR and we repeat adrenaline every three to five minutes. No requirement of giving amiodarone in non-shockable rhythm. Got my point? So this is how we manage the shockable and non-shockable rhythm. So coming back on our question. So patient was in ventricular fibrillation, in cardiac arrest in ventricular fibrillation. So for this patient, I will go for defibrillation, immediate defibrillation apart from CPR. So 2 liter bolus IV fluid, first option, no, no scene of giving, I mean this is the priority we can start but this is not the priority. Intravenous adenosine, that's the treatment of SVT. So till it was SVT, we, can, we could have given adenosine but not now. IV adrenaline, yes we will give but what is the priority? Defibrillation, defibrillation is the priority as you can see in the flow chart that we discussed. Got my point? So this is what we have to remember in ACLS. Now a few things I will tell you about drugs and the access in next question, okay? So shockable rhythm, ventricular fibrillation and pulseless ventricular tachycardia, non-shockable asystole, pulseless electrical activity. Shockable rhythm, shock is the priority, two drugs, adrenaline and amiodarone. And here CPR and just adrenaline, nothing else. Here, of course, we have to do CPR, shock, adrenaline, amiodarone, okay? Here, CPR and adrenaline only and we have to try to find the cause, okay? Now, coming on the next question. 45-year-old patient of RTA with chest injury was brought to emergency with no pulse and breathing. So, patient had no pulse no breathe, and breathing. So, person is in cardiac arrest. So, no pulse. On attaching the monitor, following rhythm was seen. So, some rhythm was seen. Now, as you can see, this is not VF, right? This is not VF. VF is like this. This is not VT. VT is formed QRS complex, right? Broad formed QRS complex at a very high rate. So, this is not VF, not VT. And this is not a straight line. So, this is what? Pulseless electrical activity. It just seems like ready, okay? Pulseless electrical activity. Well, if I had pulse in this patient, I would have gone into the flowchart of bradyarrhythmia management. But since patient has no pulse, this is pulseless electrical activity, right? So what is the immediate management in pulseless electrical activity? Chest compression, defibrillation, ABCD approach of trauma patient because this is a trauma patient. And auscultation to rule out tension pneumothorax. Well, definitely. The immediate management is we have to start with chest compression because the patient has no pulse, no breathing, patient is in cardiac arrest. So we have to start with chest compression. Defibrillation is never done in pulseless electrical activity. The ABCD approach, we will go for ABCD approach but 
after BLS approach, after starting with the compression. So this is done in the latter period. And auscultation to rule out, yes, we have to rule, find the cause why the patient has landed up in pulseless electrical activity. So we, and a patient is trauma patient, so we have to rule out tension pneumothorax. But these are not immediate. Immediate is chest compression. So let's see what we will do in this patient of this pulseless electrical activity who is a trauma patient. So patient was brought to the emergency. Patient was unresponsive, unresponsive, okay? So when the patient was unresponsive, I told you what we have to do, right? This is in hospital, so call for help. We already have help, okay? Then uh, scene safety would already would there. So call for help. We ask more people to come because I have got an unresponsive person who can be in cardiac arrest. Now, what do I do? For this, we go for basic life support approach. Basic BLS approach, life support approach. What is basic life support approach? That is pulse and breathing is assessed. Pulse and breathing is assessed. So we see pulse and breathing. And accordingly, we manage. We start with, in this patient, I'm starting talking about this patient. So this patient had no pulse and no breathing. So patient is in cardiac arrest. We start with high quality chest compression. We start with high quality chest compression. Okay. Now I'm doing this high quality chest compression. I can go for primary assessment, means side by side. Primary assessment. Primary assessment is A, B, C, D, E approach. That is airway, breathing, circulation, disability, and exposure approach. Right. So I'm starting with chest compression. I'm doing the BLS approach, and then I'm going to primary assessment. And then we go for secondary assessment. Secondary assessment, once the primary assessment is done. Secondary assessment is cause finding tool. We try to find why the cause, why the patient has landed up in this situation. So this is a RTA patient. So there's a possibility tension pneumothorax, so heart is not getting refilled, right? So if I do a tube thoracotomy or just release the tension pneumothorax by putting a needle in the second intercostal space, again the heart, compression of the heart will be removed and the patient cardiac output will be maintained. So that would be definitive management. But first we have to start with BLS and the management of cardiac arrest, followed by primary and then followed by secondary assessment. This should have, has to be the sequence, okay? So if you see this question, chest compression, this is, we did BLS approach, found no pulse, no breathing, so we started with chest compression, right? ABCD approach, this is done in primary assessment. Primary assessment is done once after BLS assessment. And auscultation to rule out the tension pneumothorax, this is done in secondary assessment. And secondary assessment is after primary assessment. Okay? Right? So what was the question? What is the immediate management? Answer is chest compression. Okay? And this flowchart, which we have already discussed in detail, should always be there in your mind. Okay? Okay. Now let us come on the next question. During advanced resuscitation, that is ACLS of a patient with non-shockable rhythm, non-shockable rhythm again, two doses of adrenaline was given. What is the next drug which should be given to the patient? So this question, we are talking about the drug which we have to give to the patient. Okay. So again, I will discuss about the drugs, emergency drugs, emergency drugs, which we give in cardiac arrest, which we use in managing cardiac arrest. So emergency drugs can be divided into can be divided into two groups, right? The drugs for shockable rhythm and the drugs for non-shockable rhythm. Non-shockable rhythm. If it is shockable rhythm, there is two drugs: adrenaline and amiodarone. Amiodarone, adrenaline. We give 1 milligram, 1 in 10,000, right, IV, and we repeat every 3 to 5 minutes, right. Adrenaline maintains the vasoconstriction, and by this we are trying to maintain the perfusion. That's the role of adrenaline. So we have to repeat it every 3 to 5 minutes because the half-life is 3 to 5 minutes, okay. This is the main drug for resuscitation in cardiac arrest. Amiodarone. Amiodarone is given in shockable rhythm because amiodarone is an antiorhythmic and it stops the automaticity of the heart and increase the chances 
of the shock which we give to the patient in shockable rhythm. Uh, it there are number of times the shock is not able to convert the rhythm into sinus rhythm because heart is is let's say the rhythm of heart is very array. So this amiodarone increases the chances of shock to make the shockable rhythm into sinus rhythm to get the rhythm converted into sinus rhythm by decreasing the automaticity of the heart. So it makes the heart more vulnerable to the shock. Chances of of defibrillation becomes better after giving a mutarone. So we give 300 milligram IV bolus followed by 150 milligram. We can give 150 milligram IV bolus. So the only two dose. If two dose has not done the job, amiodarone is of no use. No other drug. No other drug. Non shockable rhythm. Only one drug. Adrenaline. Only one drug. Adrenaline. Same dose. One milligram. One in ten thousand IV. Repeat every three to five minutes. So these are the only two drugs, adrenaline and amiodarone, for cardiac arrest. Now one more drug which you have to keep in mind. If amiodarone is not available, we can give lidocaine also. So uh, lidocaine can be the alternative to amiodarone, right? In one to one point five milligram per kg body weight, right? This is just an alternative to amiodarone. Okay, if amiodarone is available, we use amiodarone. If amiodarone is not available, then lidocaine. Okay, no other drug, no atropine, no sodium bicarb, no other drug. So in this question, what is the next drug? Non-shockable rhythm. So non-shockable rhythm, we have discussed only one drug, adrenaline. So two doses of adrenaline was given. What is the next drug? Well, next drug, none of that has been. This is a Fox question which I have created for you. Amiodarone, lidocaine, sodium bicarbonate, atropine. No, none of these. I will add, I will just cut one option and I will write adrenaline, right? And the answer has to be adrenaline, always adrenaline. In non-shockable rhythm, adrenaline, adrenaline, adrenaline and adrenaline every three to five minutes, nothing else, right? So no amiodarone, no alternative amiodarone, lidocaine, no use of sodium bicarbonate during resuscitation, no atropine. Atropine is only used for symptomatic bradyarrhythmia. arrhythmia. Got my point? So this, in this question, I had not given the option, the right option. I added the right option. So answer has to be adrenaline. Okay. Now coming on the next question. So the next question, which I will discuss with you, a question on which I have curated on the special circumstances of uh, resuscitation, that is obstetric resuscitation. So the question is, a young 38 weeks pregnant patient with RTA was brought to emergency with no pulse and breathing. Resuscitation was started, that is CPR was started. All of the following is true regarding obstetric resuscitation except. Well, options. Left uterine displacement during CPR. Defibrillation with lesser energy to protect fetus. Perimortem scissor delivery within 5 minutes if ROSC, that is spontaneous circulation has not been achieved. Airway to be secured as soon as possible. So all our special things which we do in OPS resuscitation. So OPS resuscitation, obstetric resuscitation is a special circumstances of resuscitation in which we have to do some maternal intervention and some fetal intervention, gravid uterus in intervention. So some obstetric intervention due to the gravid uterus and some maternal intervention due to the physiological change of pregnancy which has happened, we have to do some special intervention. So like any other CPR, right? In obstetric CPR also, we have to start with high quality chest compression, right? We have to start with high quality chest compression, okay? So what are the special maternal uh, intervention which we do and what are the special ops intervention which we do? See, in ops patient, we start with high quality chest compression, high quality chest compression. Everything is same, that is we manage according to the type of the rhythm, shockable or non-shockable, right? The shock energy is same, drugs same, okay? So all these are same. In non-shockable CPR and the drugs same. So nothing different. What is the special thing which we have to do? Since the gravid uterus does, because of the gravid uterus, after 20 weeks, there's aortocaval compression. 
So to maintain the perfusion, one person during maternal resuscitation ops always have to keep the uterus in left uterine displacement. Well, we all know that uh, if we do a left tilt of the uterus, then also there will be a left uterine displacement. But tilt is not uh, something which is recommended because if you tilt the person, then compression would be affected. So we try to keep the uh, ops patient in a supine position and a separate person do a left uterine displacement to remove the aortocaval compression. This is maintained continuously throughout the resuscitation. So first special thing which we do is left uterine displacement manually, right? This is the ops intervention which we have to do. Then the IV cannula, for cardiac arrest we always try to put an IV cannula, should be above diaphragm, should be above diaphragm, right? So that the drug goes into circulation, not prevented by autocable compression, okay? Then perimortem scissorin delivery. If the resuscitation is not successful within 5 minutes, then ROSC has not been achieved. We go for perimortem caesarean, caesarean delivery. What is this perimortem caesarean delivery? There itself with a scalpel, the skin, uterus, a nick is given, baby is taken out. Now the baby is taken out, now we have converted uh, let's say one patient, one ops patient into two separate patients, mother and the baby, the chances of resuscitation is better. See, during uh, arrest of a mother, maternal, let's say, or, or arrest of an ops patient, our priority is mother, not the baby. Because if uh, mother will not survive, the baby will never survive. So, our priority is mother. So, even if there is no chance of the survival of the baby, if we take the baby out, then also we have to take do a perimortem scissor and delivery, right? Reason that, that if we are not able to uh, convert R into ROSC, the mother will not survive and the baby will ultimately not survive. So, to give a chance to the mother, we have to take the baby out, right? And if there is a chance of survival of the baby after taking the baby out, then that would again give a better chance for the survival of the baby, right? By managing the baby away from mother. Got my point, everyone? So it's always better to do perimortem season delivery in five minutes if the resuscitation ROSC has not been achieved, okay? Okay, then remember that the airway of ops patient is difficult. So we expert would secure the airway the most expert person they present there would secure the airway as soon as possible as soon as possible why because risk of aspiration is high in them and i told told you about that respiratory rate should be adequate here you have to be more careful to keep it more just adequate because risk of aspiration is high in the pregnant ladies okay so we have to secure the airway as soon as possible okay so if you see this chart so what are the how do we have to know this chart my patient was a trauma patient rta patient so this was a sudden patient had an rta and went into sudden cardiac arrest but lot of patient ops patient who go into cardiac arrest they are in hospital patient so if possible the lady is very ill, the mother is very ill. We have to see why the person is so ill and we have to prevent the person going into arrest. So prevention would be best in ops patient because chances of revival is very, very difficult, right? So whenever a mother, a pregnant patient in hospital go into cardiac arrest, we go for BLS, high quality CPR, defibrillation as indicated and other ACLS intervention. So all these are done as it is like a normal patient, nothing difference. Then we assemble the maternal cardiac arrest team. Maternal cardiac arrest team, they have a pediatrician, an anesthesiologist, an intensivist and an obstetrician present in it because they all have to perform their, their roles. Then we have to consider the etiology of arrest, why the patient has gone into arrest. My patient was a trauma patient, maybe hypovolemia, maybe pneumothorax, anything. But we have to consider the etiology because chances of revival is best if you know the etiology and reward the etiology. Then what are the maternal intervention? Perform airway management, that is secure the airway as soon as possible. Administer 100% oxygen, avoid excessive ventilation. Oxygen should be given 100% in mother, but excessive ventilation should be avoided. 
place the IV above diaphragm and if I know the cause that she was an eclampsia, preeclampsia, eclampsia patient on magnesium and magnesium is the cause of the cardiac respiratory and followed by cardiac arrest. We give calcium gluconate or calcium chloride right, to, as an antidote. Obstetric intervention, we have to maintain left uterine displacement. We have to detach all the fetal monitor. Fetal monitoring is not done during cardiac arrest management and perimodum serum delivery that is within 5 minutes we have to get the baby out. Then we have to continue BLS ACLS, high quality CPR, defibrillation when indicated and other ACLS intervention. And if ROS is not achieved within 5 minutes, perimortem scissoran delivery and neonatal team is handed over the neonate. So this is how we manage a maternal cardiac arrest. So this was our last question. Now coming on just one more point which I want to tell you before finishing off that any patient goes into cardiac arrest, right? How do you give the drugs? The best route for giving the drug is IV, always intravenous, always intravenous. If IV access is not possible, then we go for intraosseous, intraosseous access, okay? IV access is not possible, then we go for intraosseous access. No other access is feasible for giving the drugs. So IV or intraosseous not intratracheal, no other access. So remember this, okay? So this is all about my few questions uh, for discussing the topic resuscitation. I hope you got a clear cut idea of the, of the topic and I hope you will be able to solve all the questions if any question is asked on this topic, all the questions of this topic. Thank you so much.